Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. This is Vivi Cameron here for Knit and Tangle, and today I'm going to be sharing a super easy formula to create shadow box cards or diorama cards. I'm going to be using some of the latest supplies by Knit and Tangle. This one's here on my table. Along this video, I'm going to be sharing little tips here and there, and I hope you find them useful. So I'm going to start by stamping the images and I'm going to use Memento Black Ink because it's a great ink to use with Copic markers. I do not have a lot of Copic markers and I don't have the most expensive ones. I just bought a set of Copic Xiao markers and this is the set B. And I also got extra colors to guarantee that I have primary colors skin colors and some pastel colors and also grays because the gray is just a have to have so with that i managed to do everything i haven't have the need for more colors but of course the most you have the better but that might take some time to build up my stash so what i do is i just grab the markers in the same color family and I start by applying the darker color at the edge of the images and then I come with a lighter shade and I blend that a little bit more. I like to use a lot of pink when I'm coloring and I add some dots of pink color over the cheeks of the critters and then I pass over a lighter shade of a skin tone so that the, those pink Dots doesn't look like they have a hard edge, but they kind of blend and vanish nicely, and it looks like a blush in that little face. Another thing I do is I leave a lot of spaces without color, and those are the highlights in my images. So I try to avoid working extra in the coloring by just doing that. For example, in here, I just apply just a hint of color here and there, you can add shades with a darker color and then use a lighter color to blend that out. And if that blending is not enough, you can always use your blender pen and soften the color even more. So you see the angel dress and also here, that's another example and that you don't need to apply color all over the image. You can just leave loads of blank spaces. And another thing I have been doing as well is using light colors to apply over darker colors so that I'm going to kind of distress the ink and I'm going to create a kind of cool effect and the ink is going to kind of spread over that area, uh, adding lights and texture as well. So that's a thing I do a lot. And another thing I want to show you is that you can also mix completely different colors from different families. So there I apply a skin color and then I came here and I add gray and this is going to look super patchy and ugly. And then I start kind of blending towards the center of that image using another skin tone, which is a little bit darker than the previous one. And then I grab this pinky color or like a coral color, add the cheeks, some colors here and there, the ears, and then I come with another different shade of color and blend that out completely. So the image start getting a little bit of shape and honestly, eh, I'm mixing here crazy colors. I also leave some areas of the images with a very light color. So almost, I try not touching those areas there so that it's going to give the effect that eh, there is a lighter area there when I use another super light color to go all over the image and blend completely all that crazy coloring I did there. So I hope you understand what I do, but honestly, I don't think too much uh, when I'm coloring. And if you see me, I use a lot of pink also on critters. Uh, I think the pink look really, really nice on brown. And sometimes when I make a mistake, I just use gray or a very light gray to fix it. You know, because I use alcohol markers on wet, I'm doing wet on wet technique. <laughs> uh, the color tends to go a little bit over the edge of the images and you will never notice that 
It is not ideal, but if it happens, it's not the end of the world. So another thing is I use this color a lot. It's one of my favorites. It's the E04, and that color is great to add shadows on browns or any color. I use it a lot. Okay, so those are my coloring tips for today because we need to move forward. So now I'm going to explain you how to create a super duper easy shadow box card or diorama card. And I'm going to explain you a formula I have created to cut the paper and being able to put these beautiful scenes together. So I'm going to start building up this shadow box card that folded measured five and a half inch by four and a quarter. So this is a standard American C6 card. I'm going to need two standard A4 sheet of paper and I'm going to cut them in half. I'm going to start by creating the front and the back panels of the card. And here is the formula to create the front and the back panels of a shadow box card. You need to add the width of your envelope or the card front panel size plus the desired box depth. You can decide how deep is going to be your shadow box card, always keeping the proportions. And as I want my card to be one inch deep, just like this one here, and because this is going to fit a standard C6 envelope, I'm going to use that size as a reference. So I'm going to add an inch of the width of that piece. That is four inches and a quarter. So I'm going to cut this piece at five inches and a quarter. And I'm going to do exactly the same with the other piece of cardstock. Now you have to score the depth size from each end so that as the depth of this box is one inch, I'm going to score these panels at one inch from each end, and I'm going to do exactly the same with the other piece. So the back panel and the front panel of this card are exactly the same size and they are scored in the same way. So now I'm going to score and fold those lines to create this exterior box or the exterior panels from this child box card. All we have to do is to overlap the pieces like that. And when you fold the card towards a side, it will have the size to fit in a standard C6 American envelope. If you want to add a flap to this card, all you have to do is to cut a five and a half by four and a quarter piece of paper. Then you are going to need to score that paper at one inch, which is the depth of the card. And you can add that piece like so to your card if you want to. But today I'm not going to use that cover because I want to see the inside of the card and I want to display that nativity scene without anything on top. For the panel that goes just behind the front of the card, I'm going to cut a piece of paper an eighth of an inch shorter than the front panel of the card. So that's the formula to cut the piece of paper to create the panel that goes behind the front panel of your card. And this is one eighth of an inch shorter in the width, but it's the same length. And then you need to score that piece at half of the box depth from each end. If the depth of your box is one inch, you will have to score lines at half inch from each end and if for example the depth of your box is two inches you will have to score those lines at one inch it's always the half of the depth of your box and this apply for any card size is one eight inches shorter than the front panel of your card so this is the extra bit that I cut so that I can show you a little bit better what I mean. 
And then I'm going to score this at half inch, just because that's the half of the depth of the box. And now I'm going to fold over the scoring lines. So the thing is that you need to create this kind of a shape and this piece here is just half of the depth of the exterior panel of your car. So every time you add a layer of cardstock, the walls inside the box are going to get thicker and thicker. So when you cut a, another layer or another, yes, another layer of cardstock to put inside your car, you need to bear that in mind. Now I'm going to use some layering dies that fit in those panels of this card. This is a very narrow and small card, so I can't use any other die I have but the smaller ones. And I'm going to use the larger die to cut the front panel of the card, the medium die to cut the panel just behind that one, and a smaller dies to die could any extra layer of cardstock I'm going to place just behind that. Because I'm thinking that I'm going to add another a layer of cardstock inside this card. So one of the things that is kind of a big deal is the symmetry. So you have to make sure that you are going to place those uh, dies in exactly the center of the previous die cut window so that they will be perfectly aligned. So that's all at the moment. This is how this is looking at the moment. And I'm going to cut a third layer of cardstock to put behind those windows. So this piece of paper is going to measure 5 inches and a half by 3 inches 5 eighths. Please pay attention that I'm always using the envelope or the card from panel size as reference. In this case, for this panel, I need to add the half of the box depth size plus 1 eighth of an inch. And then I'm going to subtract this from the width of the envelope or the card from panel size. So that I get the width of that second layer of cardstock that is going to go behind the front panel. The length is going to be exactly the same. So now we need to score this piece of paper and we are going to score it at one quarter of the box depth each end. So for example, if the depth of my box is one inch, I'm going to score the lines at a quarter of an inch, and if it's two inches, I'm going to score those lines at half inch. Because the depth of my card is one inch, I'm going to score this at a quarter of an inch both ends. So you can see my silly formula here applied to the real pieces. This piece is going to be a lot narrower than the width of the front panel of the car. Just because I need this piece to be narrower than the previous piece, and it's going to be the half in depth, so when I layer all these pieces inside the box, they are not going to bend or they are going to move kind of smoothly. When the inside panels of the shadow box are slightly larger than what they should be, they are going to bend or they are going to create a curved shape inside the box and it's going to be a little bit harder to press down the box and put it inside the envelope. If this is happening to you, that's the reason why. For this car here, I'm just going to use a stencil and I'm going to grab the back panel and I'm going to apply a little bit of ink there to add a little bit something. You can do some ink blending or stamp something there, also your sentiments, but I'm going to keep it very simple just to show you how to put the card together. To put the card together, I'm going to grab this, which is the panel that goes just behind the front panel, and I'm going to use this tape here just to put it in place. We need to align this properly. If we don't do that, the card is going to be very, very wonky. So we need to be very accurate in this. And I would recommend, honestly, to use a liquid adhesive 
I'm just using this tape because it's quicker for this video, but all my cards have done using glue. So now I'm going to grab the smaller piece and I'm also going to align it there with that scoring line in the back panel of the car. Then I have to glue this together and I do it this way, but honestly you can do it anyway, it's easier for you. I just apply glue or adhesive in this folding here and I need to make sure that this is going to be adhered to this panel here just like this. So those edges have to be aligned. And once this is done, I can adhere those panels to the back panel of the car. Okay, so once this is done, we are almost finished here. I'm going to move the paper to one side and another, trying to break the fibers of the paper and trying to give that paper that shape. But this is a 300 grams cardstock. I have about 900 grams of cardstock over the edges of that car. So this is going to behave like a spring. It's always going to keep back to this shape. I have to say that when I was working with this paper, I was kind of hating it. <laughs> That's the secret behind scenes. But when I see the cards, I will say that this paper works better because the cards keep that sturdy shape once you take them out of the envelope. The other cardstock is also great and it's wonderful to work with. You won't have all the issues to fold and score lines like you will have with that super thick cardstock. But then the extra work you have to do when you use this cardstock is worthy. Now when this is done and when this is finally getting some uh, kind of uh, shape, I stick completely this front panel of the car. And at this stage, I have little pieces of that funky tape everywhere. This is by Tonic Studios and is a very strong adhesive. And to get rid of that tape here and there, I use an eraser. For now, I'm going to put together this car and this is only three inches and a quarter width. So in that tiny space, I'm going to fit all these little images to create that little composition. So there is the car and because some of the die cuts are out of the page, I have to use a British C6 envelope instead an American envelope. And I'm going to need to create my own envelope for this car here because it's huge. It measures six inches by seven inches. So I'm going to show you how to make that envelope really quick. And I'm going to need a piece of paper that measures 10 inches and a quarter by 10 inches and a quarter. And I'm going to use the envelope punch board and it says that I need to score the first scoring line at four inches three quarters. So I just punch and score a line according the guide lines in the envelope punch board. And then I keep following those folding or scoring lines to punch and score the next folding line just like that and if you want to round the edges of the paper to make a kind of more uh, elegant envelope you can do that using the back of the punch board here like so and all you have to do next is to glue the parts together and another thing I want to share with you today is about the paper I use to create these cards. And I have here the paper I use for this one and this one. It's a very, very thick paper and it's really hard for me to keep those cards falling down. 
Although the good thing is that it's very sturdy. And if I want to keep the car stand up, it's just not a problem. It's, it's a really nice paper and it's good quality. So you can make up your mind about what kind of paper you will rather prefer to use to create this card. And for this card here, it's a little bit more wonky. I made it using this paper here, which is Craft Perfect Ultra Smooth 240 grams. So you see here the 240 grams paper, it folds really flat. This is a larger card. It goes just like that and it provides less resistance. This one is like, whoop, whoop, whoop. And when you put them inside the envelope, you will notice uh, that of course they are more sturdy. So go like that. And another thing I want to say is that you can use your shadow box cards like that or like that. The folding can go at the top or at the sides of the card. I hope that makes any sense. And the card making process is going to be exactly the same. You just need to turn around the box to fit any image or any composition you want to create on them. If you ask me, I prefer the larger sizes of this box, but this is proof that if you like a smaller cards, you can also use this beautiful supplies by Neat and Tangle to do that. And something I want to say about this video, and you have to forgive me, is that I recorded when I was making the three cards in this video. And when I was looking at the video clips, many of them were missing. I think I got about 400 clips because I don't record there everything in one go, I stop the camera and then I film a little bit and then I stop and I film another part and that's something I always do. So it was very challenging to try to put all that crafting time in 20 minutes. So I'm showing you here some bits and bobs of the things I was doing and it's pretty much the same. Every time I put one of these cards together, I found different ways to put it together, but one of the things that never changed was the way to calculate the size of the paper. So that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Do not forget to subscribe to this channel, visit the blog for more ideas and inspiration, and find supply list in the video description. I'm also going to add the links to the blog and shop so you can have a look at the products I'm using here, pictures, and more information about this project. Thank you very much for watching and happy crafting. Bye.